So no Bradley Dack, no KC Palmer, and we're 2-0 down at half time. But guess what, folks? We're still unbeaten. We'll talk about that and much more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time looking back at the Blackburn Rovers Reading game at Ewood Park. Now, we'll get to that in just one second. Now, if you are new to the channel, please hit the old subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We've got it all here under one roof. So, let's waste no more further ado and take a little look at the match, which ended up all square in the end after 90 minutes, 2-2 uh, between Blackburn Rovers and Reading. And boy, oh boy, as the cliche goes, this was definitely a game of two halves. Bodvardsson on a daily double, 12 minutes and 25 minutes to give Reading a comfortable 2-0 lead, despite the fact that the first 10 minutes, it was all Rovers. Uh, I think even Rothwell, I think he uh, hit the bar. Uh, there was another effort that was agonizing, agonizingly close. But uh, it didn't go in. Nothing, none of them went in. Uh, Flip-flop a little bit into the second half. And Rovers got the bit between the teeth. Uh, a lot more pressure in the Reading area. And two howling defensive errors. So the first incident was Paul McShane hacked down Elliot Bennett inside the box. And obviously Captain Fantastic smashes home the resulting penalty. And then on the 76th minute, another incident involving McShane. I think it might have even a bit. It was a handball call. Uh, it was given by the penalty. And once again, Captain Fantastic smashes home the second to bring it all level 2-2. But that wasn't it. A lot more to talk about in this game. Obviously, no Bradley Dack, no Casey Palmer. A massive creativity. Uh, uh, massive creativity. Shortage within Blackburn Rovers, but up step Joe Rothwell fantastic performance for him today We'll talk about his uh, match rating in just a second But Adam Armstrong was left to also try and fill that void But he picks up an injury midway through the first half He was then substituted on came Dominic Samuel who was later then rub substituted himself for his own injury So injury crisis galore a lot of rumors flying around social media about a couple of uh uh, free transfers coming in, low knees coming through the door within the next 24 hours. A very, very busy place. Ewood Park will be tomorrow. Anyway, let's take a look at the starting 11s first and foremost. The hosts, Blackburn Rovers. We had Ryan Gold, Bell, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Nyimbi, Evans, Rothwell, Smallwood, Bennett, Graham and Armstrong leading the line. And these are my match ratings for Mighty Rovers. Six for Raya, seven for Bell, seven for Lenahan, eight for Mulgrew, eight for Nyimbi, eight for Evans, eight for Rothwell, six for Smallwood, seven for Bennett, six for Graham and five, just the five for Armstrong. Armstrong due to his injury, so he couldn't really couldn't really change uh, much of the play uh, within his short stint at uh, Ewood Park on Wednesday night. Anyway, let's take a look at their visitors. Uh, Manoni was in goal. Yayadon, McShane, Moore, Blackett, Kelly, Mita, Bakuna, Aluko, Baldock, and Bodvardson, the main man up front. Two goals for him today. Mike Danger Man McNulty was on the bench. Uh, he got a little bit of game time towards the end of the thing, but not really anything to uh, write home about. But what a player we have on our cards, uh, folks. And Corey Evans, I don't know where he's been for the past two or three seasons. Well, he started to show up this season, the past two or three games. He's been uh, he's been one of the best players, if not the best player on the park. I think the man of the match went today went to Rothwell. But uh, to be honest with you, it should have been either Nyimbi or uh, Corey Evans. I think those two have been absolutely phenomenal. And uh, and th th that's just credit to what Tony Mowbray is creating here uh, at Ewood Park. You know... Obviously, we're trying to improve the squad depth a little bit. It's not tr it's not easy. You know, the, the, the fee that we're being quoted for this Breton fella at Nottingham Forest is absolutely bonkers. Eight, ten million, whatever it is. Um, so, and, and now the rumours of, of, of Rodwell, uh, Adichipi, and uh, this guy, uh, is it, um, what's his name? Uh, Harris, Harrison Reed from Southampton. All these players are rumoured to be coming through the doors within the next 24 hours. And Adichipi, I think, has kind of got quashed a little bit. But... It's it's uh, it's good to see that hopefully that these additions get added. I know people have their own opinions on on Rodwell, um, but I think it, it, if 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 the money's good, I think he he's, he deserves another crack at the whip. And you know, Mowbray said this himself: the pedigree he has. He's played for Everton. He's played for Manchester City. Obviously, he kind of went a little bit south for him in Sunderland. Uh, you know, he made the I think he made the wrong move uh, between Everton and Manchester City. If he had stayed at Everton, he could be still in the England reckoning right now. So maybe, just maybe. Um, if this deal does happen, uh, Mowbray can, can tap into that old uh, Jack Rodwell uh, of, of, of yesteryear. Uh, he's only 27 years of age, still got at least five years at the top. And if we could get the good four or five years out of him ourselves, 
then we could be in for a bit of a stonking deal. Anyway, let's take a look at the heat maps for this match. Once again, down the right-hand side. And why is the right-hand side such a key importance for Rovers? That's where Naimi's running his little socks off. He's been absolutely phenomenal uh, in, these, in, in these opening four games of the season. Keep him fit, and we've got a cracking right back on our hands. He does a lot of donkey work. He's, he seems to be very confident on the ball. And uh, I think like one of the commentators said on the old uh, I follow uh, commentary, um, that season in League One has done him the world of good. Look at how many touches we had of the ball compared to Reading. 718 compared compared to uh, Reading's 524. We're going to go backtrack a little bit. I've not gone over the statistics here. Uh, the average match rating on whoscored.com, 6.78 for Rovers, 6.61 for Reading. They've given the man of the match to Bodvartson. I have to disagree with that one. And I don't I don't think De uh, Mulgrew, Mulgrew deserves an 8.2. Yes, he got two goals, but really Evans and Nyimbi were absolutely phenomenal. Rothwell was immense as well. What a pickup he's turning out to be. Total shots for overs, 16 compared to 8 for uh, Reading. As for possession, we dominated that 60%. No, I'd say 61% compared to 39 for uh, Reading. Pass success rate, once again, 72% in favour of Rovers, 62 for Reading. Uh, we did 9 dribbles compared to 2. Uh, we won the aerial battles, 42 to 34. We won more, more tackles, 22 to 19. More corners, 6 to 1. Uh, but we were dis dispossessed more time. Uh, in fact, scrap that. Reading were dispossessed more times, 20 to 11. So uh, obviously the 2-2 scoreline kind of flatters uh, Reading a little bit. They only had a couple of real good chances and they scored for them. So maybe just maybe, maybe it's it's our defensive frailties that, uh, that gave uh, Reading a bit of a chance in this one. Anyway, take a look at the shots for Rovers. Obviously a lot in that center of the uh, penalty area. There are a lot, lot, of, lot of goal mouth opportunities that just couldn't be tucked away. A couple of long distance efforts as well. Um, so not too bad um, for Rovers. So you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. Now, what did the gaffer have to say? Shortly after the final whistle between Blackburn Rovers and Reading. I think so. And yet at half time, you might have you know been happy to take a point. It's, um... And yet we all know the spirit of this team, the fighting spirit that, uh, you know, several times last year, I think we came from two down and managed to either salvage a point or you know, I think once or twice we maybe went out to win. So um, kept going, dug in, thought we started really well. Obviously, Joe smacked the cross by the post. It, um, they had a few things blocked around the six yard box. We had a few good efforts at... Um, and then it sort of knocked the stuffing out of our goal. It was just a, like a hopeful ball they're trying to put over the top. Darrell lost the flight of it a little bit. Thought he was going over his head, hitting him on the top of the head. Him and David got a bit mixed up. David was going backwards when he probably should have come and got it. And the boy just nicked in. But um, I think it knocked the stuffing out of us because we'd started so well. And we had to react. We scored a second, of course, which was a decent cross into the box. But... Um, so right from the off of the start of the second half, I think we, we, we showed our intention and um, and I think they could smell that it was there for us. We just needed to get that next goal and we did get the next goal and um, we played on the front foot. We we were asking the questions. The last 10 minutes or so was a bit scary because it was a bit end to end. We were leaving ourselves very open and lots of space defensively and they'd brought some really fast players on the pitch. and um, But... Uh, great credit to them that they dug in. They they didn't lose a football match again. It's been a long time. I feel since we've I think we've lost one at Charlton, did we? But after that, it's been a long time. It feels since we've lost a football match, which is um, which is a good feeling. Uh, and I think hopefully there's a connection with the fans and the team. They know that even at two 0 down, we're gonna give everything we've got. So. Um, Let's hope there's some positives from tonight. We'd have liked to have won tonight, of course we would, and, and we've got another difficult game on Saturday, but it's at home against a very good technical football team that we're going to have to be really at it. But um, let's look forward to the challenge and let's see how we're going on Saturday. Yeah, I think so. I know for long spells of the first half. I think it's, it's, it's you know, particularly the first quarter of an hour or so with the first half, although we started really positively. It's... Um, we just needed to tinker a few things. At 2-0 down, you can't just keep going, so we made some changes. I'm a bit harsh on Richie, I think, but it's um, we just needed to just mix that balance up in midfield, really, and try and get an extra striker on the pitch. And, um, and it paid dividends. You know, we, we scored from um, what were pretty clear-cut penalties, you know, managing to push Elliot a bit higher, Rothwell a bit higher, and um, having two targets at the top end of the pitch. Obviously, Elliot Dominic did really well until he got injured. He's, he was a threat, he had a good leap, he was causing them problems, keeping it up there, but um, Joe not all showed what he is. He's, he's a young lad with lots of lots and lots of potential, and um, 
you know, and physicality, which was important for us today. We, when you're chasing a game, sometimes you've got to get it forward and you've got to keep it up and you've got to press in behind it. And um, and we did that well second half and nearly got nearly got all three points. It is, and I, I think he failed once or twice doing it last year. I think he uh, scored one and missed one. I don't, I'm pretty sure that was the case. I, th- I, think I remember him missing a second penalty last year. So um, yeah, um, listen, he's an international footballer. He's 32 year old now. He's he, I would back him to do what he did I thought it was great his first penalty they just smashed it really I think um, and I asked him in the dressing room there he, did he, he didn't know which way he was going before he, he was trying to look at the goalie and the goalie didn't move and so he just picked a corner which was and he's so pure with his left foot he doesn't sclaff them you know he doesn't kick them into the ground he makes a pure contact and the ball flew in the back of the net so from that point, we th- we'd hoped that we could have created a chance or two to, to, to win it, and we did. And not all, a brilliant bit of play, to be fair, to, to work the move, to get the ball in the box. And Joe's probably edited it too well. If he edits it a little bit, makes it not such a good contact. It maybe drops in the far corner, but he's edited it well, and it's just gone over the top. It's, it's, it's football, really. You know, I could have easily changed the formation back again and, and put a little bit more defensive cover on and stopped it being so open and yet I felt we'd scored two goals. I was just thinking of the mentality. If, I'd, if we'd have been two up and got dragged back to 2-2, two, two, you'd have been looking at the clock thinking, let's get the end, let's take the point and move on. And so um, we just kept going really. We kept driving and trying to get that third goal, but we did look a little bit vulnerable in that last 10 minutes because there was a lot of space left at the back as we pushed on. But uh, And they did have Barrow on the pitch and Sims on the pitch who could really run so uh, it was dangerous but we came through that we didn't concede and um, I think you know that's why we ultimately ended up with Lenahan and Nyambi playing and outside of Mulgrew and uh, you know the good speed and power with both of those lads and so we saw it off and yeah, let's take the points, let's put it in the bag, let's cool down the next day, let's assess the injuries, let's see what we've got available for the weekend, let's see if we can sign a player or two before then and let's keep going. Yeah, listen, you've just summed it up, I'm not sure what I'd say about that, I think um, Bradley, as I said the other day, Bradley's not bad, it's just, I don't want to risk Bradley, I don't think, you know, you could, we could put him on the pitch and he comes off after 15 minutes and he's out for eight weeks, so... If it takes a few days or it takes another week or whatever it might be, let's see how he is the next few days, see whether he's ready for Saturday. If he's not ready for Saturday, that's OK. Let's, as long as he plays 35, 38 games for us this year, 40 games for us, then you know, we'll be happy to get that out of him. Um, we just need to be careful that we don't um, push him too hard. He did play in that midweek game at Carlisle and he did work extremely hard at Hull for us. And, and he's, you know, he's a very dynamic footballer, so we have to be careful with him. Um, Casey, you know, obviously Casey was brought really to to not replace Bradley on any day, but a player who can play a ten, he can play eleven, he can play seven, you know, he can play anywhere along that three behind the main striker, and um, he was unavailable today as well. But uh, hopefully he'll be ready for the weekend, and so that'll be a positive for us. That said, I thought Craig Conway did really well when he came on, worked hard. We. we Started him on the left, he kept cutting back to whip them balls in and so um, we changed him to the right. I think Rothwell's finding his feet now, I think everybody can see that what a good player Joe is and we have to find a way of getting the best out of him. For me it was all about his getting acclimatised to the physicality required to play in this team, that you have to run, you have to get back, you have to tackle and I think he showed that in abundance tonight and so pleased with him. Um, Let's 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 assess everybody over the next few days, as you said, and let's see what we've got for the weekend, and let's take a very difficult game on Brentford. We'll look forward to it and stay positive and stay on the front foot. Well, Adam's got a, one of these plastic boots over his ankle at the moment, but he did say to me he thinks the physio's being a bit overcautious and he thinks he's, he should be all right. Whether he means he's all right in the next day or two or whether he means a week or two, I don't know. Let's wait and see. I'm pretty sure the way modern day football is that he'll be getting some sort of scan or x-ray the next day or two, but um, hopefully just precautionary and it, it's all clear and it's just a knock or a twist. That's not so bad. Dominic, I don't know yet. He obviously was very, very careful coming off, very slow coming off. That's a knee, I think, and so potential ligament damage, I think. Let's see. Fingers crossed for him. but. Um, that's right. it's a bit early for us to know yet. I think that again he'll he'll be getting a scan, I would assume. Yeah, of course, listen, we've worked really hard over the last few weeks to try and make things happen. It's been a slow process, of course. Nobody's in a rush. As as I've said in the past, there's a few players that we've got that people are desperate to take on loan and yet 
they, they have to stay until we get the players we need and um, that's why is every year transfer deadline days is a, it's a manic day isn't it because everybody seems to leave everything to the last day when they think right I can't do this I'm not going to this deal's not going to happen let's do that and that's how it works really so let's wait and see we, we are trying hard hopefully we'll sign a few players in the next few days that that have to come and try and prove themselves in our group in our squad after they have to acclimatize to this emotional group that work really hard for each other and have a great connection um, they've come into a different league and they've got to use the qualities that they've been showing for a long time now and uh, and, and new players have to try and fit in with that really and um, so let's see how long it takes as I said about Rothwell it's taken a little bit of time he's getting up to speed obviously Davenport's been injured but he's a fantastic young footballer as well and um, you know hopefully it won't be long before he's back so Let's see, top end of the pitch of course we need to, I don't want to stand here and tell everybody we're desperate for top end of the pitch because the prices go up, so, um, but you know, let's let's wait and see, um, I'm sure Bradley won't be long, with Danny Graham, you know, soldiering away at the day, working really, really hard, not all came on, made an effect, so, um, and, and as I say, the top end, you've got your Conways, your Bennett, your Rothwells, all can play underneath Casey Palmer, so um, we'll, we'll be fine, I'm sure. So I've heard a bit what I had to say about the match, and you've heard what the gaffers had to say about the match. What did Mark Mayo from the Tilehurst End podcast say about Reading's 2-2 draw with Blackburn Rovers? So from a Reading perspective in tonight, it really was just a case of throwing away two points that we probably should have taken home. And mainly the problem with the dropping of the points tonight is because it was individual errors. It's Paul McShane's penalties twice that, uh, that gave Blackburn the points. And it's disappointing because I don't think we really let Blackburn have any real open play opportunities. It seemed like there was a decent lid, at least to, in and around our box, to keep the pressure down. And, you know, going back to the start of the game, Reading going 2-0 up in the first half was good. It kind of goals that came out of nowhere. The second goal was really good from our perspective because it's a sort of goal we've been dying to score this year, getting the ball out wide, getting into the box. So that was really good for us. First goal seems to have come out of nowhere, as I said. But second half, as I said, I don't think Blackburn rolled us over. I think Blackburn looked like a team that are going to finish sort of mid-table, low mid-table, probably be fine when uh, all the uh, fit attackers and everything are back into the game. But for us, really two points dropped, two penalties that didn't need to be conceded. Just seeing the replays now, terrible challenge, challenges from Paul McShane. And, well, it's the first point, which is a positive, but ultimately, this is a game we should have won. Moving on to social media, let's take a little look at what's been going on. So Ryan Niembe said this, not the way we wanted to start tonight, but boys dug deep to bring it back. Couldn't do it without the fans. On to Saturday, Elliot Bennett, the, the wounded warrior. Some comeback tonight from the boys. Second half was just what we all are about. Great spirit, fighting for each other and sprinkle with quality. Proud to be part of this group. Uh, meanwhile, Steve H said this. I saw some grand sights in America, but nothing as beautiful as Ewood Park on a match day. Hopefully you get the same reaction on Saturday, uh, Steve. Moving on to Simon Woodford. Big result in the context of the game. Brilliant fight back in the second half, but can't afford to give a team two goal heads. Head start though. Hashtag character. Meemar Dave Bannister said this. Good point in the end, but a depleted squad, although that was a very poor Reading team. Rothwell has to play centre mid. Looks a proper player indeed. Mike Delap said this. Tremendous spirit to come back from that hopeless spot at half time. The first half, a walking advertisement for two or three more additions. Palmer and Dak sorely missed. Meanwhile, Steve Reese said this. Struggle against the poor side. This shows how defensively poor we can be. Not looking forward to Brentford. Come on, chin up, Steve Reed. We can uh, we can do something here. Meemar Northern Rovers said this. Take the point. Much better second half, with Rothwell in particular impressing. Might even won it in the last 10 minutes. Not all caused them a lot of problems. Bell disappointing. Got into good positions, but his final ball was poor. I'm not not too sure I agree with you, Northern Rover. He, yeah, I think he's he's a work in progress. Is is Amari Bell? Meanwhile, Rover's tweet thought Roth Rothwell was outstanding tonight. Uh, tough to drop. Worth noting, our options from the bench showed a real lack of depth. Need, need reinforcements. True, but they made a difference. They made a difference. I thought Conway made a difference. I thought uh, Nuttall made a difference. Dominic Samuel, on the other hand. Well, let's move on. Moving on to Ian Herbert said this. Excellent fight back. The lack of open play, creativity and fit forwards is a concern indeed. Meanwhile, Dave Thompson would have taken that at halftime. Hopefully injury is not too bad. Kevin Wisely, good point in the end. No Dak or Palmer. Three injuries in the match. Two uh, down, showed great heart. Well, that is a character of this team summed up tonight. Honestly, edge of the seat stuff from 
Uh, two no down, great result. That was Anthony Carl Gibson. Moving on to Mr. Nobody. Uh, we proved when nothing seems to be going for us, we fight like warriors. Two down and we lose four to injury. We fought for the win to the death. Point gained, Rothwell is a great player. He runs his socks off, doesn't he? And meanwhile, Natasha Morton said this. Well done, Rovers, for coming from 2-0 down. But first half was bloody awful. Need to play for 90 minutes, not 45. Meanwhile, Carl Smith said this. Well, I would have taken that and I have time, but still frustrated. Mowbray must go and, and get two, three, four players in on loan today. Showed us that there's a lack of depth. Slash options. Meanwhile, Jamie McConnell said this great comeback and team spirit. It looked doom and gloom at halftime. Great fight in the second half. Still unbeaten. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's go around the grounds and take a look at what's happened elsewhere this midweek action. Uh, Derby bounced back against Ipswich 2 0 uh, to get themselves back in the thick of things within the division. Meanwhile, uh, current tabletop Leeds United were held to a 2 2 draw up against Swansea. Look at Bolton running away with it at the minute. 1-0 winners over Birmingham, despite not playing too great. Hull City, the team we beat last time, uh, they uh, got themselves back in track with a 3-2 win over Rotherham. And our next opponent's Brentford. They took on Aston Villa. Goals galore in that one, 2-0. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Norwich City had the better ha better better result up against Preston North End, where their old gaffer was in charge there now. 2-0 winners for Norwich City. And right at the bottom, look at Stoke City. What a nightmare start to the season they have. 3-0 lose, losers to Wigan Athletic. And what does that do to the table? Uh, as you can see, Leeds United, Middlesbrough and Bolton joint top with 10 points. Obviously, goal difference kind of separating the, the size. Our next opponent is Brentford, sitting pretty themselves in fourth spot. As for the mighty Rovers, we're into the top 10. We are ninth, just behind Wigan in eighth. And above, Nottingham Forest on um, some sort of technicality. Down at the bottom, QPR, Reading, Stoke and uh, Ipswich are the bottom four. As for all you numbers buffs out there, Neil Mappe is the current top goal scorer with five goals. And he's actually the king of assists as well with three. So he's currently top dog in both columns. And he's coming at Ewood Park on Saturday. So we must break his legs. That's right. Meanwhile, uh, who else is joining him? Andres Wyman's in there with four goals. Jay Rodriguez is also in there with four goals. And Kimar Roof for Leeds United is also in there with four goals. As for any Rovers players? absolutely no one in those two uh, tables so we need to get that rectified um, but we have a couple of goal, goal scorers in the mix that are not far behind in the old uh, in the old tally charts so that's pretty much all I've got for you today folks if you enjoyed this video please give it a good old thumbs up if you are new to the channel smash the old subscribe button to keep you back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related championship related world football related we're going to all here under one roof also make sure you check out my description links to my other social media platforms are in there and if you want another good resource for anything Rovers related why don't you head over to the roverschat.com website link to that puppy in the old description below and if you want to chat with Rovers fans just like me, head over to the BRFCS.com forum where you can talk about Victor and HB, you can talk about Rodwell, you can talk about all these potential transfers right now. It's probably a hot topic in the old forum section, so make sure you check that bad boy out. Anyway, for me, I'm looking forward to the next few days to see what kind of new players are going to be added to the team. I don't care if they're blue, yellow, pink, whatever, as long as they're not Burnley scum. I will take out anyone. I will give them all a shot. until When they pull out the blue and white, I'll be rooting for them. So if it's Rodwell, if it's Anicha B, if it's, um, if it's, um, who's really garbage? If it's Elliot Ward coming back again, I will, I will be cheering them on. Believe me, all the way, because they're mighty rovers. Anyway, uh, we'll be right back pretty soon with the Brentford preview in a, in, I don't know, hours time. So check back here for that puppy. If you've enjoyed this video, once again, give it a good old thumbs up. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>